bend round, glitch, informal noun, a sudden, usually temporary malfunction, or irregularity equipment. A draft version was lost in a computer glitch for US-1, suffer a sudden malfunction or irregularity, bend drown, cause a malfunction or glitch to Majora's Mask, post-1, September 7th, 2010. Okay, I need your help with this. This is not copy pasta. This is a long read, but I feel like my safety or well-being could very well depend on this. This is video game related, specifically Majora's Mask, and this is the creepiest shit that has ever happened to me in my entire life. Having said that, I recently moved into my dorm room, starting as a sophomore in college, and a friend of mine gave me his old N64 to play. I was stoked, to say the least. I could finally play all those old games of my youth that I hadn't touched in at least a decade. His N64 came with one yellow controller and a rather shoddy copy of Super Smash Bros. And while beggars can't be choosers, needless to say, it didn't take long until I became bored of beating up level 9 CPUs. That weekend, I decided to drive around a few neighborhoods, about mm, 20 minutes or so off campus, hitting up the local garage sales, hoping to score on some good deals from, you know, ignorant parents. I ended up picking up a copy of Pokemon Stadium, GoldenEye, fuck yeah, F-Zero, and two other controllers for two dollars. Satisfied, I began to drive out of the neighborhood when one last house caught my attention. I still have no idea why it did. There were no cars there, and only one table was set up with random junk on it, but something sort of drew me there. I usually trust my gut on these things, so I got out of the car and I was greeted by an old man. His outward appearance was, for lack of a better word, displeasing. It was odd. If you asked me to tell you why I thought he was displeasing, I couldn't really pinpoint anything. There was just something about him that put me on edge. I can't explain it. All I can tell you that is, if it wasn't in the middle of the afternoon and there weren't other people within shouting distance, I would not have ever thought of approaching this man. He flashed a crooked smile at me and asked, what was I looking for? Immediately, I noticed he must be blind in one of his eyes. His right eye had that, you know, glazed over look. I forced myself to look at his other eye instead, trying not to offend, and asked him if he had any old video games. I was already wondering how I could, you know, politely excuse myself from the situation when he would tell me that he had no idea what a video game was. But to my surprise, he said he had a few ones in an old box. He assured me he'd be back in a jiffy and turned to head back into the garage. As I watched him hobble away, I couldn't help but notice what he was selling on his table. Littered across his table were rather peculiar paintings. You know, various artworks that looked like the ink blots that a psychiatrist might show you. Curious, I looked through them, and it was obvious why no one was visiting this guy's garage sale. These weren't exactly aesthetically pleasing. As I came to the last one, for some reason, it almost looked like Majora's Mask. You know, the same heart-shaped body with little spikes protruding outwards. Initially, I just thought that since I was secretly hoping to find that game at these garage sales, some Freudian bullshit was projecting itself into the ink blots. But given the events that happened afterwards, I'm not so sure now. I should have asked that man about it. I wish I would have asked him about it. After staring at the Majora-shaped blot, I looked up 
and the old man was suddenly there again, arms length in front of me, smiling at me. I'll admit, I, I jumped at a reflex. <laughs> I laughed nervously as he handed me a N64 controller cartridge. It was standard gray color, except that someone had written Majora on it in black permanent marker. I got butterflies in my stomach as I realized what a coincidence this was, and I asked him how much he wanted for it. The old man smiled at me and said, I could have it for free, that it used to belong to a kid who was about my age that didn't live here anymore. There was something weird about how the man phrased that, but I didn't really pay any attention to that. I was too caught up in not only finding this game, but getting it for free. I, I reminded myself, you know, to be a bit skeptical since this looked like a pretty shady cartridge, and there was no guarantee it would work. But then the optimist inside me interjected that, you know, maybe it was some kind of beta version, or, or pirated version of the game. And that was all I needed to be back on Cloud Nine. I thanked the man, and he smiled at me and wished me well, saying, Goodbye then. Or at least, that's what it sounded like to me. All the way in the car ride home, I, I had a nagging doubt that the man had said something else. My fears were confirmed when I booted up the game. To my surprise, it worked just fine. There was only one save file simply named Ben Goodbye Ben he was saying Goodbye Ben I felt bad for the man obviously a grandparent and obviously going see now and I for some reason or another reminded him of his grandson Ben out of curiosity I looked at the save file eyeballing it I could tell he was pretty far in the game. He had almost all of the masks and three four remains of the bosses. I noticed that he had used an owl statue to save his game. He was on day three and by the stone tower temple with hardly an hour left before the moon would crash. I remember thinking it was a shame that he had come so close to beating the game but had never finished it. I made a new file named Link out of tradition and started the game, ready to relive my childhood. It was such a shady looking cartridge. I was impressed with how smoothly it ran. Literally just a retail, like a retail copy of the game, save for a few minor hiccups here and there, like text being where they shouldn't be, random flashes of cutscenes at odd intervals. Nothing too hard, bad. However, the only thing that was a little unnerving was at times the NPCs would call me Link, and at other times they would call me Ben. I figured it was just a bug, a fluke in the game program, causing our files to get mixed up or something. It did kind of creep me out though after a while. And it was around the time that I had beaten the Woodfall Temple that I regrettably went into save files and deleted then. I had intended to preserve the file, you know, just out of respect for the game's original owner. It's not like I needed two files anyways. I did it hoping that it would solve the problem. It did, and it didn't. Now the NPCs wouldn't call me anything and where my name should be in the dialogue. It was just a blank space. My save file, though, was still called Link. Frustrated and with homework to do, I put the game down for a day. <laughs>